Good morning. This is John from the Springs Mennonite Church. Well, I hope you had a good 4th of July weekend. I hope you're refreshed, ready to go for the last half of the year. Yeah, that's right. Half of the year has gone by. Now we're into the last half. And the thing that strikes me is how the sun changes. At my house, the sun comes in right through the bedroom window and it's so bright and so wonderful. But in a few more months, uh, I'll get up before the sun comes up and I don't like that as much. Okay, so let's look at this passage. I picked today from Luke chapter six, nope, chapter 12, sorry, verse six. Luke 12, six. Jesus said this, what is the price of five sparrows, two copper coins? Yet the God does not forget a single one of them. And the very hairs on your head are also numbered. So don't be afraid. You are more valuable to God than a whole flock of sparrows. Well, he's talking here about the cost of sparrows in order to, to sacrifice them in the temple. See, the Old Testament laid out different levels of who had to bring what so that the rich could bring something that was comparable to what the poor could bring. And if you couldn't do anything else, you were down at the bottom of the list. Economically, you could bring sparrows. And what they would do is outside of the temple, they'd have various, various tents set up to sell various things so that you don't have to go get them yourself. Somebody else already has. And so he asked, what's the price of it? Since there's two copper coins? It says, God doesn't forget a single one. And then he says, and the very hairs on your head are numbered. Well, as you can see, I got a bunch of them. Now, I was laughing last night when my son called because he's getting bald up the top. And, and I was talking to my grandson and I said, you know, you better be careful because you're going to cause your dad to lose more hair. And my grandson said, oh, that's right. I said, but I don't have that problem. I never have. And I got the feeling, barring some disease that kills my hair roots, I'm never going to have that problem. But what's interesting is that even something like the hairs on our head, God knows. Did you ever think about that? If he knows that, surely he knows everything else. Surely he knows what you're struggling with in life. I mean, good grief. If he can figure out how many hairs you have, don't you think he can figure out what's bothering you and what's causing you pain? Well, Jesus lets us know about that when he says, all the hairs on your head are numbered. So, don't be afraid. Pretty simple, don't you think? Basically, he's making the comparison that God knows the hairs on your head. See, here they are. If he knows that, he knows everything else. So don't be afraid. Well, I realize it's a lot harder to live that than it is to say it. As I've said many times, it's really simple. It's just complicated. And it's complicated because most of us don't think much about our hair. Well, you know, a lot of people spend a lot of time trying to get it right in the morning or in the afternoon. A lot of people color it, a lot of people design it, that sort of thing. But generally speaking, relative to life, we don't spend a whole lot of time fussing about our hair. 
And we don't think our hair is going to kill us. Now, I know there are some ladies who think if their hair is wrong, they, they'll be embarrassed to death if they go out in public. And I don't want to, I don't want to mock that. That's how they feel. And, and we ought to understand that that's important to them. Maybe some guys feel the same way. I don't know. I never did. So I can't identify with that. But I can identify with this notion of not being afraid. All kinds of things happen in life. A lot of good, a lot of bad. I can't control any of that. I was talking with my son again and talked about another son who's in deep trouble. And, and I said, you know, John, there's nothing I can do to help Daniel. There really isn't. There's absolutely nothing I can do to help Daniel. Daniel has to decide he wants to be helped. And until that day comes, Nobody can help him. And that leaves me feeling really bad because I love my kid just like you probably love yours. I, I hurt for my children just like many of you have done. But I recognize I'm not in charge. And so I did the same thing I've done many times in the past. I prayed a real simple prayer, and it goes like this, Lord, please help Daniel, please. You see, when we allow ourselves to put our difficulties in God's hands, whatever they are, whether they're big or small, whether they seem life-changing or just irritating, whenever we put those things in God's hands, we can rest assured he's got them. Now, don't take them back. <laughs> Let him keep those things until such time as it works out. And if you don't see it working out, don't worry about it. It's not your problem anymore. Just do what you have to do to serve the Lord and let him take care of the other stuff. So you see, it really is simple. It's just complicated. And I know many of you have very complicated lives. I do too. And many of you have many great personal struggles. And I do too. But yet this passage says very clearly, God knows what's going on and that's what really matters whether I know what's going on or not doesn't I'd like to know but I really don't have to know I just have to know the one who does know so thanks for listening today I hope you have a terrific wonderful day I hope your life is at least a little bit better than it was yesterday. If you have a prayer concern or a need, please get in touch with us. We'll do everything we can as fast as we can to help meet your need. We really mean that. Well, until we come back again, I ask the Lord's blessings upon you. Thanks for listening. I'll talk to you again.